so the strategy of the enemy is to get you to focus on everything that's going wrong. So you don't focus on the one who can get you out of the problem that you're dealing with. encourage you right now to just focus on God, focus on his goodness, focus on the things that he's done for you this past week. If you had a trying week, then you're in the right place to be encouraged because I believe that there's a word that's going to encourage your hearts. And so we just uh, welcome you to our service today. And we ask that you just feel free to, to get involved as we sing praises to the Lord, as we pray to him, and as we lift up his name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we glorify you. We thank you and we honor you on this day. We pray, dear God, that you would be with us as we progress in the service, dear Heavenly Father, and that you would move by your spirit in this place, dear God. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that if there's people, that are somebody that's listening, dear God, that had a, a, a trying week, dear God, that you would just encourage their hearts, dear Heavenly Father. I pray, dear God, that you would uplift their spirits, dear God, in Jesus' name, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
the Word. I want to start off by reading a passage of Scripture <clears throat> found in Mark, the ninth chapter, uh, beginning at verse 14. Mark 9, verse 14. The Bible says this. When they returned to the other, when they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them, and some of the teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe, and they ran to meet him. Verse 16 says, What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed with an e by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they, could not, they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Verse 20 says, So they brought the boy, but the evil spirit saw Jesus. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, wreathing, wreathing and foam, foaming at the mouth. How long has, he, has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire and into the water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. Verse 23 says, what do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Amen. The title of today's message is, Help Me Overcome My Unbelief. Help Me Overcome My Unbelief. As a Christian, most of us understand the importance of having faith. It plays an important role in our life and in our Christian experience. In fact, Hebrews, the 11 chapter, verse 6 says this. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because everyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So we're called to live a life of faith. Without faith, you can't please God. Without believing in him, you can't, you can't please him. We're, we're, we're called to live a lifestyle of faith and belief in God. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 7 says this. From the New Living Translation, it says, And we live by believing and not by seeing. And in the NIV version, it says, For we live by faith, not by sight. So as believers... Our lives should be full of faith as we trust in God, believe his promises, and stand on his word. And while we know that to be true, and we understand that, that we must live by faith and we have to have faith, and faith and belief is essential to our, our Christian experience, there are times when trusting God, having faith in him, can be extremely challenging. Can be extremely challenging. We don't we don't like to admit it, but there are times when our circumstance make it hard to believe. Make it hard to believe. You know those times, those those times when when you're called into your boss's office and and you're told that the company is downsizing, and unfortunately, you're one that that will be losing your job. You know, those times, you know, uh, or the time when the doctor breaks the news as compassionately as they can that your loved one has two weeks to live. You know, th those times when when 
you, you uh, uh, are, are desperately longing to feel God's presence. And the only thing that you get is silence. You know, those times when 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 a, a, a close friend or even a spouse betrays your trust, you know, those times when these things happen to us and it, and it, 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 it can affect our faith. If we're honest, most of us, most of us will have to admit that it can be hard having faith sometimes and believing when you're going through such trying times. And so in today's text, there are a couple of things that caught my attention in this particular story that I want to point out to you. First, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, let me tell you this, bring your problems to Jesus. Bring your problems to Jesus. Notice in Mark, the, when you go back to Mark, the 19th chapter, or the 9th chapter, verses 17 and 18, it says, one of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, teacher, I brought my son so you can heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit and won't let him talk. It's verse 17. But look at what it says. Verse 17 says that I brought my son so you can heal him. You know, one of the things that we have to do that we oftentimes forget when we're going through trying times is we forget to take our, our problems to God, to take our, our, our burdens to him. Several years ago, uh, uh, a singer uh, named uh, Jessica Reedy, she had a song entitled, Put It on the Altar. Just whatever, no, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, just, just come in and put it on the altar. He knows the things that you're, 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 you're going through and he'll work it out. Just put it on the altar. Are, you know, that, that's, that's part of why we deal with the dilemmas that we deal with is because we don't take them. We don't bring them to God and to give them to him. But this father, though he was distressed, and he was distraught and he was dealing with the with the. Uh, uh, the infirmities that were on his son. He knew enough to bring his son to Jesus. You know, bring your problems to the Father. Bring your bring your bring your 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 your, your cares to him. In fact, 1 Peter 5th chapter verse 7, we've we've read it before. But listen to what it says. It says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Everything. Everything. That's where it starts. You have to, you have to bring him, bring your problems to him. And release them and let him deal with them. Let him help you. How comforting it is to know that we have a God who cares. I mean, if you, if you think about that. If you, if you think about that, the God of the, the this, this, who created everything, who owns everything, who is in control of everything, cares about you. He cares about what you're dealing with, what you're going through. He cares about you. And so the strategy of the enemy is to get you to focus on everything that's going wrong. So you don't focus on the one who can get you out of the problem that you're dealing with. But this father brought his son to Jesus. See, we have to remember that we have a redeemer who lives. We have to remember that he will never, God will never leave us nor forsake us. We have to remember that he's always in control. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're facing, so bring your problems to him. Bring it to him. Now, this was an interesting part to me. Jesus uh, says in Mark, the, uh, if you skip down to the 21st verse, 21st verse says this. How long has he been like this? How, how long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire and into the water trying to kill him. Then he says this. He says, have mercy on us and help us. If you can, if you can, see, let's not judge the father or this father too too harshly. 
Because I said, like I said, if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we're, we, we, get, we get like that. The problems and the stresses of life get us so down, we go to the Father, we, bring, we, we, we try to bring our, our, our problems to Him, and, and, and within us, the only thing that we have is have mercy on me. Help me if you can, because I, 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 I know that you've done it before, but this, is, this problem right here seems too, too, too difficult. I've been dealing with this. In fact, the father said that this has been happening since he was a little boy. So the, the, the implication is that he's been dealing with this for quite some time. Sometimes you may be going through a situation and you may be dealing with the problem for a while. And it gets to the point where you, you don't think that, that, that anything will change. You don't think that anything will change. And so the, 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 he, he said that have mercy on us and help us if you can. And, and, and don't forget this. This is a father who first presented his son to the disciples to see if they could heal. And they couldn't. They couldn't. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't do it. And so now when he finds himself, uh, he finds himself at the, in the presence of Jesus and he asks Jesus, no wonder he said if you can. Because he was just dealing with the, the people, with Jesus' disciples, and they couldn't cast the demon out. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes life is hard like that. Sometimes we go through things and, and the situation seems hopeless. It seems hopeless. He was in a, in, 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 at a place in his life where his faith was severely diminished. Have you ever been like that? Where, you, where, you, where, you, where it's just hard to believe. Life can get us down like that sometimes. If we're honest, your faith is severely diminished. But listen, it's diminished, but it's not dead. It's diminished, but it's not dead. And as long as you have some faith in you, you have hope. In fact, Jesus says, is, is, is you, if you have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, that's, that, that, that lets, he's, he's letting them know that it, it, it doesn't take all that. You just have to, you just have, to have, uh, have some faith and let me do the rest. But his faith, he was in a, in a situation, in a position where his faith was diminished. Here we, we, we see that in the Father, we see a person who is discouraged. He's desperate for his son to be relieved of his suffering. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. Verse 23 says, what do you mean if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. I like how Jesus redirects the conversation away from the question of his ability and puts it on the importance of having faith in his ability. Because Jesus says, you know, what, it, the real question is if I can, because I can. But what you need to know is everything is possible if a person believes. So he kind of, Jesus kind of flipped it and got him, got him uh, uh, thinking uh about the level of his faith. Jesus confronts the man and he, he, he's saying, he, he's, he's, he's teaching him about the level of his faith, but also encouraging the father by letting him know that everything is possible. You just have to believe. You just have to believe. And now we get to the heart of the matter. We get to the heart of the matter. In verse 24, the Bible says, The father cried, the father, father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe. I have some faith. I, 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 have, I have some faith in you. But I'm going to be honest. The things that I'm dealing with, 
the situations that are coming at me, that I'm faced with, I, I don't I don't see a way out. And those 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 situations are causing me to have waves of doubt. So I do believe I, I've seen this 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 father was a part of the crowd that seen Jesus work miraculous signs. I've seen what you've done, so I, I believe I, I have I, I've seen some of it. You've done I've seen how you 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 healed the sick over here, and I've seen how you 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 know you you've healed whoever. I, I've seen it, but I, but I'm still wrestling. I'm still wrestling with, with, with my own insecurities, my own fears, my own unbelief. I love the honesty and sincerity of this father's declaration. And listen, if we can be honest with ourselves, humble ourselves and be honest with God and let him know that, listen, I, 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 I know that you can, but with the situation I got, Going on, if you work it out, it's just like one of those things where it, should, it just seems like it's too good to be true. It just seems like it's, it just seems like it's just too good to be true. I, I, I have, I can see zero way out of this. It just seems like it's too good to be true. And and, and the enemy will, 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 will try to get you to focus on that. I don't know how I'm gonna pay my bill. I don't know when, when I'm going to get another job. I don't know when this sickness is going to go away. I don't know if this person is even going to overcome this sickness and, 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 and leave. I, I don't know. And you're telling me to, to believe it. It just, it just, you know, it just seems like it's too good to be true. That's what we wrestle with sometimes. That's what we deal with. And so this father says, I believe, but help my, help me overcome my unbelief. Help me get to the point where, where the, the faith that I have overtakes the doubts and, and, and insecurities and fears that's trying to well up in, 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 in me. Help me to overcome that. We need our father to, to, to help us to remember because listen, faith is a matter of the heart. It's a heart thing. Because you can you can believe in your head. Because this this is almost this is what this this father he he he's seen some things, so he believes it in his head. He knows that it could happen. But the question is, is it going to happen for me? And so, if you want to build your faith up, you have to start with with with, with your heart being in the right place. You have to have a heart for God. You have to. You have to, have to, 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 to hunger and thirst after righteousness. You have to, to read your Bible so that you can know how God operates. You can know what he says in his word, and then you can stand on his word during those times when the enemy tries to overtake you with unbelief. This is where this father was. I believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Why else would he have brought his son to Jesus? So he, he, he believed. He knew that something could happen. But your problems can get you to a point where you, you just don't see a way out. That's who I want to encourage today. I want to encourage you that, that when you're going through those times, when, you're, when you feel like you're dealing with, with a, a depression and, and despair and, and you don't see a way out of your situation. Your, your, your things are mounting. You feel like Job. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing the, uh, reading Job in, in my personal Bible study and I, I got past uh, verses, uh, chapters 1 and 2 when, when Job was, was uh, uh, he had a messenger come to him and Gave him bad news. One thing, four, four times, four times, there was uh, messengers that came to him and, and gave him bad news. In fact, the Bible says that while one messenger was speaking, the other one came in. 
It's just like bad news came. As, it's like a wave of bad news. Just one thing after another. That's what I want to encourage today. Because you feel like that. But God will help you even in that time. Because the Bible says that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. In fact, when you're going through and when you're having a, a, a time that, that where, where troubles are coming like, like a flood, like a wave, when you're in that place, I want you to raise the level of your expectation because it's in that place that God shows up the most. That's why Paul says that when I'm weak, that's the time that I'm strong. So, so I, I, I do believe what, what helped me to overcome my unbelief. Listen, raise the level of your expectation because you know that your father, he cares about you. He loves you. And he says in his word that everything that you're going through, everything that you're dealing with will work out for your good and for his glory. But sometimes we, we, we forget what that really means when we, when we quote that scripture. You know, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and were called according to his purpose. The, the, the key thing in that verse is all things. All things will work together. The good things will work together for your good. And then the bad things will work together for your good because there's some things that you can learn when you go through. Your faith is going to be built. And so when we're in a place when we have hard trials and life has us reeling, listen, cry out to the Lord with the measure of faith that you have. Lord, I, I, I believe. Because you made a way for me. You made a way for me in the past. You know, and I got through that. So focus on that. Focus on the fact that you got through that. But then if you're, if you're just being real, but the situation I'm dealing with, I, I just don't see a way out. Okay. Okay. God will help you overcome any doubt and fear that tries to creep in. He will give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. Meaning, you won't be able to explain it, but you know that there, there, there's just something that comes over you that gives you a peace and your situation uh, uh, almost demands that, that, that you scream to the hilltop, how am I going to have, how is this going to work out? But you have peace, that peace that comes from God. And people won't even understand it. But he's able to give you that peace. And so if you need help overcoming unbelief, so I want you to do, I want you to meditate on this first. Throughout this week, this is our challenge. I want you to meditate on Psalm, the ninth chapter, verses 9 and 10. The Bible says this, The Lord is a shelter for the, for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. He's a shelter for those who are oppressed. He's a refuge. He's a covering for you in the time of trouble. You know, we, we, we have a relationship with God. We, we know his name. We know he is the Lord and we trust in him. And he promised that he won't abandon those who search for him. This is why you can't, you can't give up. This is why I love the fact that the father brought his son to Jesus. He was, he, was, he was searching for him. He was, seeking, he was seeking out the one who can help him and, 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 and give him what he was needing. And the Bible says that when you seek him, he won't be abandoned. So hang in there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't give up and quit. Because God is, 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 is he's still working. He's doing something behind the scenes for your, on, on your behalf. And even while you're going through, there's some things that you can learn that will help you 
in the next phase of your life, at the next level that God elevates you to. So hang in there, even when you're dealing with unbelief. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray right now for those who are struggling, dear God. Right now they're in a place where it's hard to trust you. It's hard to, to see how things are going to work out. I pray, dear God, for those people that you would help them to realize that you're working behind the scenes. Father, I pray that you would help us all to trust you even when we can't track you, even when we don't know what's going on. Father, help us to, to build ourselves up, to worship you, to praise you, to focus on you. Father, I pray that if somebody is in a situation like that, that they will bring their problems, bring their burdens to you, understanding that you care for us. And dear God, I pray that you would just give us strength, help us to endure such times as this, dear God. And now, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, I pray that you would go with us and that you would be with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.